Size does matter, especially when you're talking about the display size on standalone HDMI 1080p capture devices. The View Pro from Cloner Alliance, it has a 7 inch display and that's the biggest I've seen so far. I'll check it out. That's coming up on Thrifty AV. Three and a half inches, well that's tiny. Five inches, that's better, but still not that great. Seven inches, that is the diagonal length of the display on the Cloner Alliance View Pro. I want to check this out. It's still in the box. Let's get it out of the box. Quick look at the outside of the box. This is the View Pro by Cloner Alliance. It is made in China. Standalone HD video capture and recording with a 7 inch LCD screen. It accepts different uh, formats of video, no PC required. You can schedule recording and this is important, ultra low latency. A lot of these standalone devices, there is a definite delay uh, on the screen. Back of the box says it accepts 4K 30 or 1080p and it will record up to 1080p 60. It does have a built-in speaker and it talks about going live with bundled software. Here they're talking about the inputs and outputs on the back. I'll get into that when I get into the box, which is right now. The box slides out of this inner sleeve and it's also taped on the bottom here. Well, that is nice. This comes with a nice carry case here. Here is the unit itself. Looks like I have some, uh, the pull tab for this plastic layer came off, but I was able to get it with my fingernail. Underneath this unit is what appears to be a quick start guide. The QR code will take you to the full user manual. Now underneath that, we have our accessories. This is a micro USB to USB A cable. This is a multimedia cable for composite, component, and VGA inputs. Here's an HDMI cable. This is for using the device handheld. That is a nice feature. It does have a remote control and it uses a barrel jack power supply. The power supply does come with the US connection, so I'll be clipping that on. The View Pro does not have a built-in battery. When it's plugged in, you can plug it in on the 12 volt right there and the thing's going to come on. However, if I unplug it, the thing's going to power down. Now, I can plug a battery in back here. And it's the same type of battery that's used on newer lights. It's this, uh, this isn't a Sony brand. Uh, this is Power Extra brand but it replaces a common size Sony NPF 750 F770. I'm just going to plug it in right here. And now when I unplug, I still have power here. Uh, that battery was not fully charged. It's at 60%. Okay, I discovered that this battery is not charging from this cable here. I tried it uh, with this device on, I tried it with this device turned off, and then plugged in. So this device just will not charge this uh, battery that I plugged in here. And this was my battery, it did not come with a kit. So you will need your own charger if you're going to use uh, one of these style batteries on here. Now that's not the only battery that you should provide. If you want to maintain the time and date. This accepts a CR2032 right there. And this remote is going to use triple A's, two triple A's, again, not provided. This multi-pack has some 2032s and really this is the most affordable way to buy button cell batteries is in multi-packs like this. If you go to Walmart, you're going to pay five bucks probably for one or two of these. And this came with, well, even more than what's on here. 
I'm having a little trouble getting the CR2032 seated. I'm going to try sliding it in here and then nudging it in. There it goes. That thing did not go in easy, which means it's probably not going to come out easy. All right, to bring up the menu, hit the little button that looks like a house. You'll also find that on the remote. Everything's set right, and now I'm going to hit enter. Now you read the same date there that you read there, so we can back out of this menu. And hopefully when I unplug this and then plug it back in, it maintains June 7th and that time. And it's still on June 7th. So having the button cell installed is important because it helps keep your menu settings, especially your clock setting, maintained. If you want to watch the video demonstration, go ahead and chapter ahead. Right now I'm going to go over the storage options, which is SD card or USB. That's how you mount it to a tripod. There is a line in for audio, a mic in for audio, a line out for audio. Okay, to hook up to the PC, there is a micro USB. It came with that cable. There's an HDMI out. There's an HDMI in. There's the MMI in, which uh, is for the component composite VGA. If you are using VGA, you'll need to do the separate audio input there. Uh, there's LCD. If I hit that button, it turns the LCD off and on again. And there's the on off switch. All right, I'm giving a little preview here because this thing was feeding back when I plugged my camera in. And it's because the speaker volume was feeding into my microphone. Okay, what I wanted to do just a minute ago was demonstrate the menu on this thing. Uh, to access the menu, you hit this little house button. And the first thing it takes you to is system settings. Now everything is set to default right now. Showtime is off and I, I want it off. This is the record resolution. I want to use 1920 by 1080. I can switch between four different resolutions. There is a delay between those switches. This next one is 1280 by 1024. And now I'm switching to 1280 by 720. Again, there is a delay as it makes that switch. And then I'm going to go to the last resolution is 1024 by 768. And then what I really want to record in is 1080p, and that's 1920 by 1080. Bit rate. Default is mid. I want a high bit rate, so I'm going to take it to high. File size, 4G. I want bigger files than that, so I'm going to go with 16 gigabyte files. Loop recording. I believe that records over the oldest files. When you run out of room, I'm going to leave that off. Show recording, I'm going to leave that on so I can see if it's recording. Time watermark, I'm going to leave that off. And I set the system time earlier and it has maintained it. Now those are the system settings. There's also the image settings. Now these settings will affect the video that I'm recording. It's not just the display settings. Brightness, contrast, saturation, backlight level, uh, VGA auto. I'm not sure what that does. I assume that automatically selects the best setting for the VGA. Uh, decoder update, encoder update. Uh, I probably need to do that while I'm hooked up to the internet, maybe. Restore resets to factory settings and language is English. Now the microphone speaker settings. This is very important and this is way more detailed than I've seen in other capture devices. HDMI volume, I have it up full blast 100. Now if I wanted to do a recording while I'm capturing HDMI video, I could bring that way down and then bring up my mic level so that my mic is louder than my HDMI source. And with increments of 1 going 1 to 100, or 0 to 100, I can fine tune this uh, so that it sounds exactly how I want it to sound. So that's important with the audio settings. Now finally there's the schedule settings. I'm going to leave that off for now. Uh, I am not going to do schedule recordings in this video. If you want to see a video about that, please say so in the comments. 
I'm going to plug in this SD card here and you plug it in pin side up and you'll hear a click when it goes in there good. The handheld device I showed you earlier folds out to be a tripod but I think it's coolest as a handheld device so let's hook this up and record some footage. I'm recording on a Panasonic HCX1000 in 4K and I'm also feeding a 4K HDMI signal from the camera into the HDMI input on the ViewPro. Now this is accepting a 4K signal. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit record. It is not recording a 4K signal. It is recording at 1080p on this device right now and I see the recording indicator right there. When I switch from my camera to the footage on this device you will see a resolution drop from 4K to 1080p. However, what I really want to check is how does the video look? Is there a noticeable drop in levels? What about the color saturation and the color hue? And also, how does the audio sound? You're watching me in 4K on my camera, and now you're watching the 1080p captured file that is being recorded by the View Pro right now. Now uh, I'm going to take a look and see how the levels look, but to really check, let's do a color bar test. I have brought up the waveform and vector scope for the color bars. Uh, the waveform, I have uh, this max at 768, which is where it should be. Uh, this minimum is at zero. Okay, on the vector scope, all the little color indicators are landing exactly where they're supposed to. Let's go to the captured. Okay, the video level jumped quite a bit. That maximum that was at 768 is now almost to 896. Now the minimum is still good, but all the video levels went up. And the little color indicators on the vector scope there, they scooted outward as well, uh, which is directly related to the increase in the video level. So I would probably drop the video level slightly in the settings if I want to get a better match with the original color bars. The audio was a little bit too hot, so instead of 100% on the HDMI volume, I'm going to drop it down to about 80, 85 on the HDMI volume, and I'm going to do another color bar test. Okay, we're looking at the source bars, and now my peak levels are a little bit closer to right, but these levels down here are off. But as you can see, I can sit here and tweak on these levels until I get a good match. These are the default bars. Here I have both contrast and brightness set to 40, and it's a way closer match. It's definitely good enough for me. After my audio and video adjustment, I wanted to do a quick comparison. Right now you're watching me on my 4K camcorder, and now you're watching me on the View Pro being captured from the 4K output on my camcorder. For the geeks out there, let's take a look at the file specs on the View Pro when recorded in high resolution. Looking at the file specs, the format's MPEG-4. Overall bitrate is 17.6 megabits per second. AVC codec, high bitrate profile. The codec is AVC-1. Video codec is 17.6 megabits per second. 1920 by 1080, which is 1080p. Aspect ratio 16 to 9. Has a constant frame rate of 60 frames per second. Color space is YUV. Chroma subsampling 420, which is better than 400. 8-bit depth. Audio is AACLC. 72 kbps, and it is two-channel true stereo. Sampling rate is 48 kilohertz, and the compression is lossy. The folks at Cloner Alliance sent over the View Pro as a review sample. I'm not being paid for this review. Opinions on this video are my own, and they can have this back if they want it back, but I'm going to ask them to wait till after part two because this video is getting too long. I haven't hooked this up to a game system yet. I haven't hooked a VGA source up to this yet. I haven't mixed out audio between my microphone and game audio yet. 
All those things will be coming up on part two of my review of the Cloner Alliance View Pro. If you enjoyed part one, smash that like button. Thank you to my patrons and members for supporting this channel. Stay thrifty and stay tuned for part two.